I'm trying not to overhype myself with Cyberpunk 2077, but these new details make it hard to do so. Hey everyone, I'm Weez of Content Critters, here to condense the latest RPG news so you don't have to. Reddit user Moraes has translated new Cyberpunk 2077 details from GameStar Podcasts, a German game magazine. We will cover topics that include comparisons between Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3, as well as improvements and new details on the game's NPCs and cyberspace system. In comparison to The Witcher 3, three features won't be appearing in Cyberpunk 2077. First is that more than 1,000 NPCs will have handmade routines. They will likely take the Red Dead Redemption 2 path where NPCs cycle through multiple routines, which are randomly selected. Selected. NPCs do different things at specific times, such as telling stories around the campfire at night or cooking meals in the morning. Second, there won't be barrel icons or anything similar to it to avoid overwhelming players since they tend to complete every single icon available on the map. If you recall The Witcher 3's map, there are barrels which contain random loot and crafting materials. Now unless you thoroughly enjoy exploring and completing every bit of it, then this part of the game can become a chore. Third is the removal of the detective mode. Back then, some players have already voiced their concerns regarding The Witcher's sight or sixth sense, whatever you want to call it, which isn't too interesting. In this gameplay design, you follow a trail to search for clues, look for clues, and look for more clues again, all by activating this specific mode. It has perks, but it also has its disadvantages, such as mindlessly following a trail without much room for surprises. Luckily, it won't be present in Cyberpunk 2077, but perhaps it's safe to assume that there will be some form of of cyberware, which we only need to use in certain missions, say during hacking or investigating crime scenes, where scanning the areas for clues is a must. Now, CD Projekt Red also incorporates similar styles with The Witcher 3 when developing Cyberpunk 2077. Level design improvements are as big as the jump from The Witcher 2 to The Witcher 3, which includes minimally reusing assets and manually arranging each portion of the world to make it much more immersive. There's also the team's goal of over-polishing each quest in the game. They do this by continually playing Cyberpunk, specifically finished quests, over and over again until the release in case something needs to be fixed or improved upon instead of working on the next quest. Similar to Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Cyberpunk 2077 will have multiple ways of solving these quests or missions, even three times that of The Witcher 3. They ask themselves, what is the dumbest thing a player could do now and how is it possible that the mission continues? The only thing stopping it is the player's death. One example is getting shot by an NPC. Instead of fighting back, your character decides to run away from the encounter to buy a hamburger, yet the mission still continues. Eating hasn't been confirmed, but if you're buying a hamburger, who's to say you can't eat it? In addition, according to a dev working on quest design, quote, there won't be rules about how a quest has to be. There won't be restrictions such as not allowing you to move 1,000 meters from a certain part of the map, nor limiting the number of NPCs you can interact with to 2 to 5. If the quest is good, the team expands it even more. In terms of the team size, at least 700 people are still working on the game. Because of what we're dealing with globally, 700 workstations have been provided for CD Projekt Red's employees so they can work from home with Cyberpunk 2077 installed. This is an impressive number considering that they're already in the final stages of development. Next, when your character is in cyberspace, you can summon fantasy-like creatures and warriors who can help you burn out another hacker. CD Projekt Red is following through by adapting some features in the Cyberpunk 2020 core rulebook. What comes to mind are Jackhammer and Brainwipe programs. The Jackhammer Intrusion program uses a pulsating Jackhammer-like object to fire white-hot energy bolts at the data wall, while the Anti-Personnel Brainwipe program directly attacks the Netrunner by frying his brain with jolts of current instead of his programs. 
The melee fight system shown in E3 and multiple gameplay demos will also have big improvements since the team hasn't been satisfied with it. No specific details have been provided as to what this will include. Lastly, CD Projekt Red is very proud that no one leaked Keanu Reeves' appearance in E3 and involvement in the game for more than a year. That truly has been a breathtaking moment in the game industry. So guys, what specific features or details in Cyberpunk 2077 are you looking forward to hearing about in the upcoming Night City Wire event? That's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to share, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications when new videos come out. Take care, and I'll see you again this week. Cut.